Hey guys, today's format of video is going to be slightly different from the usual. I'm kicking off a new series of videos which I'm sure you guys will be very excited to hear about. Now, uh, thanks to those of you that decide not to use Adblock or use YouTube Red or contribute to the Patreon or whatever, uh, I have actually used that money to buy a laptop uh, with the sole purpose of crash testing various different Linux distributions for this channel. Uh, as you guys well know, I often take a look at distributions by spinning them up in a virtual machine. And there are pros and cons to doing this, but the big con is uh, it has no real measure of hardware um, or anything to do with the hardware because all of the hardware is emulated. Now that can be a good thing because it gives you a very standardized idea, but it can also be a um, it, it can be a mis uh, misleading thing because it means that maybe distributions install quicker than they would otherwise on bare metal, or some components don't work as expected. Wireless drivers, graphics drivers, integrated graphics versus dedicated graphics, all this kind of stuff. So having a bare metal machine to um, try out various distributions on, uh, I felt would be a good idea. But I wanted to get an entry level laptop because I didn't want it to, you know, I wanted it to be representative of a lot of people who. Um, might use Linux uh, as well. So this this is probably on the other end. This might be a lot slower than any sort of or, or than many uh, computer enthusiasts might have. Um, but uh, it's still pretty good actually. Like it hasn't had too much in the way of slowdown, and um, it's a quality bit of gear. It is the I've got the. Uh, the page for it up here. It's an Entroware laptop, and uh, Entroware do uh, Linux-specific laptops and desktops and servers, as you can see here. And this is a nice little entry-level laptop. It's called the Tritian. It's priced at three hundred and twenty-nine ninety-nine, um, or a little bit more, of course, with tax thrown on. And um, it's you can upgrade quite a few components. What I've done here is I have upgraded nothing except for the hard disk drive, and I've given myself an 120 uh, gigabyte SSD hard drive. Uh, and that is the only thing I've deviated from the standard um, uh, settings here. The reason I've done that is because I'm I, I have this sort of gut feeling that SSDs are going to become a lot more popular in the near future as the prices start coming down. The performance gains that you get are are, are fantastic, and uh, especially for for the price that you get now, you know SSD uh, hard disk drives aren't super cheap, and they're certainly not as cheap as spinny disks. But um, if you know I was looking at trying to get the maximum performance out of my computer for the least amount of cash spent. Uh, upgrading to an SSD would be the first thing that I do, especially considering that this is only going to be a crash test model, so I can get away with 120 gigabyte SSD. If this was maybe a machine I was going to um, play games on or do anything else, I would certainly be looking at a bigger SSD, and it might be a bit more of a difficult decision then, because do I then go for SSDs for performance on things like games? And and I've got to say, generally speaking, I, I, I do quite like SSDs, but everything else is fine. Um... I got some of the part, uh, spare parts and warranty as well, just because you tend to do these kind of things. But yeah, this is the Entroware laptop. Um, and I've got to say, just in terms of the hardware, uh, and obviously I can't show you it uh, right now, but it's good quality hardware. It's a good build. The Windows Super Meta Key, they give you a choice, actually, about what you can do with that. Um, it's quite interesting to see the options. Where is it now? Keyboard. Ah, there you go. Keyboard logo down at the bottom. It says there Ubuntu lo uh, logo. You can have the Ubuntu Mate logo, the Entroware logo, or no vinyl. Um, I'm really happy with this machine, but if I was to give it one bit of criticism, it would be that the vinyl sticker on the Super Meta or Windows key does look like a vinyl sticker. It doesn't throw away the design or anything like that. It's just if I'd have gone back and... Uh, had my choice of options, I may have gone for the maybe the no vinyl option. Maybe that would have landed you with the Windows logo. Perhaps I'm not entirely sure, um, but it still looks fine, so I'm all good with that. Uh, yeah, so Entroware, and I decided to get it with the long-term support, the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is 16.04.1, and I did that because I wanted to have a look at stock Unity for the last time. Really, this was going to be the last time that I was going to look at uh, Unity, and I, it only became apparent to me this time after testing Unity that it's an entirely different experience to use on the laptop than it is the desktop, or at least this is what I found. So please feel free to agree or disagree with me. I know that this is a a very um, 
divided or divisive topic on this channel as far as divisive topics go um and uh and it's it's uh it's a tricky one because i remember back in the days several years ago now maybe around 2008 2009 when um uh, ubuntu was going from uh gnome 2 uh which nowadays looks incredibly similar to mate because that's what mate is based on of course uh, and it was going to the Unity desktop for the first time uh, as uh, it seemed as part of of, 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 of several reasons. Uh, partly because they wanted convergence. They wanted to make sure that the, 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 the Canonical and Unity wanted... Uh, Canonical and Ubuntu wanted to move towards this system where you might have a phone that can then... Uh, you know, use the same o um, OS as your laptop and it would all link in seamlessly, which never really uh, took off. But Unity was like the desktop environment that would that would do that. But also, I, f um, I think at the time there was a lot of people unsatisfied with the initial um, offerings of GNOME 3. And GNOME 3 was a very drastic change from GNOME 2 and people were very you know, up in arms about a lot of the changes because there were a lot of drastic changes that a lot of people didn't really know how to respond to right off of the bat. You had GNOME 2 that was a very customizable desktop environment and it switched over to GNOME 3, which uh, out of the box um, is a lot less customizable and it's a lot, you know, and it is designed to have a more singular user experience. And of course, there are pros and cons to that, um, which I've talked about in this video. So they did. So Unity is a bit of the answer to all of those things. And Unity was a way to keep a little bit of Oh, I'm I'm choosing the wrong word when I say consistency here, but it was like a little bit more control. You you know, Ubuntu had a little bit more control over the direction of the desktop environments. Now it seems, and again, this is only it seems that the future versions of uh, Ubuntu might be possibly more directed towards the developer market rather than the um, rather than everyone, rather than the general user market. Um, and this could possibly be a, a rather shrewd move. I mean, the kind of people that would uh, actively go and pick up um, Linux and Linux-based distributions for the first time are probably going, you know, there's a, there's a good chance there'll be developers or uh, techie people of some variety or another. So that might actually be a smarter move to where to put their flagship efforts, especially considering that they've had so much success on the server as of late. So, yeah. And also, it does then uh, pass on to the uh, Ubuntu variants, Ubuntu Mate or Ubuntu uh, Lubuntu, Zubuntu, or or any of those. Um, the the sort of the market share of the uh, of, of maybe the new user or the casual user or the person that doesn't really care too much about Linux but wants an, an uh, easy to use and secure operating system uh, as well as the usual people who just sort of want a more customized desktop or don't like Unity um, or prefer things like XFCE, Mate or KDE. So uh, it could give a different role to the Ubuntu variants, a, a more um, sort of prominent role i guess and it also possibly leaves up a market share for distributions like linux mint and elementary which do specifically focus on usability out of the box and it could give these distributions uh more relevance as well because i did kind of feel that like out of the box uh ubuntu even though i was I didn't used to be the biggest fan of unity it still was like easy enough to use especially when you've got those big glaring icons down the left-hand side of your screen, most people don't use more than maybe 8 to 12 applications, all of which you can comfortably flip, fit along the left-hand side here. So um, so you've got most of the, the heavy lifting done. You've got your notification icons on the top right-hand side here because for some reason GNOME 3 put them in the bottom left. So there are uh, a few good tweaks here. So uh, there is one thing about it, uh, one thing about it which I'm not too fond of here. You can see that's the file uh, that's actually actively being uh, recorded, interestingly uh, enough. Um, but... Uh, yeah, one of the things I wasn't a big fan of is the these these um, menus that, that go across the top of the screen because they're sort of detached from the uh, application themselves. So yeah, you know if you're if you've got the application down here or or on a different monitor, you've got to come all the way up here. Now, using the Unity Tweak tool, you can change that and you can make it so that these um, hover menus actually just appear in the title bar 
of the application itself. So that's you know it's 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 not a an issue that is uh, unmitigatable. Uh, I do think it's a little bit of a clunky solution. I prefer the more traditional paradigm, but that's just me. And again, I think it's always worth bearing in mind that I have my own biases and habits and 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 workflow and everything like that. So. Um, there's nothing to say that when there isn't a change uh, foisted upon us by a desktop environment, and you know, if I were to react negatively to that, it, there, there could be the old curmudgeon part of me that just doesn't like the change or was happy with it the way that it is. So, um, so you, you know, I, I, it, it, there are plenty of, of subjective elements to this that pass me by, of course. Um, one of the things that I do like about it, though, about Unity, that and they've given a f uh, thought to this, I think, is the uh, the left hand um, icons here. That you know, the left hand maximize, minimize, close icons onto the left hand side. Now, I don't necessarily think every desktop environment need do this, but this is where I come back to saying that this is a different beast on laptop as it is to desktop, uh, because when you're on a laptop, you have a tracker pad, which is what I'm using now. And if you are using that tracker pad to move your mouse from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side of the screen to do pretty mundane and run of the mill tasks, it can get a little bit repetitive, tiresome, um, uh, what you call it, sort of um, unintuitive. So you don't really have to move your, your mouse pointer very far from most, you know, you don't, to basically, for the majority of your operation of the desktop environment, your cursor is in the top left-hand quadrant of this entire screen. So your most important icons will be there. Uh, you minimize, maximize stuff. You've got access to your um, a dashboard here as well and then of course um, your minimize maximize buttons either in the application in the top left hand side here or if you were to maximize it it would they would still be here as well so everything seems to reside in this top left hand corner which makes it very convenient and intuitive for the tracker pad on uh, laptops which is why um, there are so many little touches to unity that I've come to appreciate because they it seems that this is a desktop environment that focuses a lot more on uh, laptops because you've got that, com you know, with between that combination of uh, keyboard shortcuts and uh, tracker, pad, tracker pad accessibility, you know, the the um, that also suits it quite well. So you can then just press the Windows or Super Meta key and it'll bring up your dashboard and then start typing as well. That's very user friendly to a laptop um, as well. So I feel that trying Unity or this time on the desktop it has kind of been lost on me because it it seems that this is a desktop environment that definitely suits a laptop more than a desktop um but am i the only one that thinks like this let me know of course in the comment section below here um i'm not going to go too much into the distribution itself i'm pretty sure i have reviewed it um and I apologize if the setup for this is a little bit janky. I'm still try obviously trying to work it in. Uh, and I'm also going to be trying to work this laptop into sort of like a daily uh, routine as well. So I get a good um, grasp of, of how an operating system, how a distribution might work when reviewing it in a more in-depth fashion. Uh, I haven't got any initial ideas on what my first distribution to put onto this will be. I wanted to do this video just to uh, just to say that I've sort of tried out Unity and yeah, like my, my views have sort of somewhat changed towards it over just, just opening it up on a laptop over a desktop. I've never done that before and there is a much bigger distinction than I really would have thought as well so so i did want to get that across uh yeah uh, my opinion is definitely changing and i'm sure the more I, I use unity in this scenario as well the more i'd get along with it uh, and i find that with most desktop environments the more you use a desktop environment the more you get used to it and i think really if we're completely honest with ourselves um at least if i'm honest with myself i could probably get on with the vast majority of desktop environments given enough time and you know customizability options and all that kind of stuff and i think one of the bigger um uh, things we should look at in terms of critique is is maybe resource use. Although again, nowadays that's becoming less of an issue um, for a, for a lot of machines as well. Um, but always something I like to bear in mind because again, it does signal uh, quality of code as well. Uh, quality of code tends to be pretty lean and efficient. It's one of those clues that it uh, that you get. So. I think that's about it from this video. Um, and also one more thing as well. I will be recording all of the um, 
stuff locally. As you can see here, I've got the OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, uh, recording away in the background. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see on various dif different distributions uh, how easy that will be in and of itself. And maybe in a worst case scenario, I'll have to do screenshot stills or what have you. Um, but I doubt that would be too much. I've seen open broadcast software on uh, most Linux distributions now, and even on BSD distributions. So that old BSD images or, or whatever the BSD operating systems are supposed to be called. Um, but yeah, all in all, uh, I've got to say it's more stable than it used to be as well with with the Unity. Uh, the, the, you know, it, it, that's that's good. So. Um, Am I going to be? Sh uh, am, uh, am I going to now be sad to see it go? Probably not. Actually, I I really like uh, GNOME. I like GNOME three, and I I it seems that they are actually taking GNOME three pretty seriously in terms of how they're going to implement it. I am very much looking forward to seventeen ten. And my problem with Unity was never how well on a personal personally subjective level it was uh, the usability of it. But my my broader um, uh, sort of dis dislike is a bit strong, but you know my broader um, dislike for for Unity was really its uh, lack of availability on other Linux uh, operating systems. Because um, if a desktop environment, I really appreciate when a desktop environment can be used across multiple environments because that uh, across multiple distributions because that means you're not tied to Ubuntu if you really really like the Unity desktop and it never really ran as well as it did on Ubuntu anywhere else. I think there were some um uh packages made for arch but i never really saw them get much use uh so um so it did seem that that um having a desktop environment that 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 was pinned entirely to a distribution that that has never um never been something that i've personally liked because i've always felt that it's it's even though it's not proprietary uh in let you know like by the by the by the letter it's sort of it does have that proprietary spirit where it's like you know that that closed in walled garden um uh ecosystem now again i'm going to flake a little bit on that opinion because um it's not like desktop environments like pantheon in elementary and cinnamon in linux mint are difficult to use so um it's certainly uh there are certainly more dimensions to it uh than that Anyway, enough of my rambling. I've got to say, yeah, uh, and also quite smooth as well. It's quite, it's quite responsive. It's quite smooth. It's quite uh, generally quite good. It looks a little bit dated, but then they were going to be making um, uh, that was going to be revamped probably by the time uh, uh, eighteen oh four would have landed. But now, of course, it's going to come with a shiny new uh, gnome desktop. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And if you have any suggestions on what distributions you'd like me to see on this machine, please let me know. Uh, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.